All right, friends, so we have a really special day. We're gonna be going through a first look at the DJI FPV combo. Now, this whole thing was designed to be a great entry level into the chase quad drone world, uh, entry level into people just learning drones for the first time, but it's also packed with so many amazing features, even a new motion controller here, which we, we still gotta unpack this thing and see what it's all about. <laughs> but we had to bring our friend TJ. TJ's been part of the flight test team for over three years. We had to bring him back because there's so many features in this. Yeah. There's no way I'm gonna be able to explain them properly to you and also bridge those two worlds. Yeah, if you can't tell, Josh is excited. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I think is, you are too. <laughs> yeah, I really am. And, it, and it's just like you said, you know, yeah, it's bringing, making it easier for people to come into, you know, AP drones into the chase, well, we call it chase quad. Yeah. The FPV quad type scene. I'm, I'm so excited for it because of the fact that it does bridge that gap. Personally, in my day to day job, I don't have a Mavic. This covers that ground, but it also switches into yeah. a chase quad. Uh, do you want to dig in? Yes, please. All right. Pop this thing open, and voila. Nice reveal. Man, that's awesome. Looks fantastic. All right, so with a DJI FPV combo, what do we get? A ton of stuff. So all of this is in there and very well packaged, yeah. I must say. Like it, it was actually a pretty good unboxing experience. But most notably, obviously you get the drone. It does come with another canopy. The DJI FPV Goggles V2. These goggles will work with other air units for DJI. So just yeah. like we fly chase quads, this won't just work only with this drone. Along with that, we have all the head strap and all mm -hmm. the gears. We got the charging cables. The transmitter is something new. Yeah, yeah, the transmitter I really am excited about. Yeah. So everything is right here on the top and it's little rockers, little push buttons. One thing I do want to point out that I do like about this is if you look on the bottom here, well, so I'm assuming these are probably extra in case one of those fall out and you lose it. And along with that, we have two full sets of 5328 props, which is pretty common in the in the drone world. So what do you say we break this down? Let's talk yeah. about the features of the drone here and we'll share that with you. So pretty much this is a hybrid. Mm. This is a drone platform, a camera smashed up with an FPV experience. Right. And you know, the first point is they're, they're marketing it for any product comes with an idea. So they're marketing it for first off drone users mm. that wanted to do FPV but it's scared, you know, they're, they're scared, quite literally, and that, that is the biggest thing. So this thing will allow you to fly it kind of like a Mavic, and then ease into the full FPV experience instead of just getting thrown into the deep end with like an FPV drone. Oh, exactly. Another part of their vision here was for content creators, just like us. Oftentimes you'll put up a Mavic and we'll be capturing something be with beautiful scenery, but then the subject matter takes off and I'm flying yeah. through the air and we have to chase it. Well, you simply can't do that with a Mavic uh, AP style platform. Right. You need to have something like a chase quad and you need to have that control and that speed and agility to be able to get the subject matter properly. Yeah, and then they're also looking at FPV users that want an HD platform. Whereas, you know, if we're using an FPV drone, we have to have a GoPro. You have to have some kind of HD camera on top of it, which adds more value, gets more expensive. Whereas this is everything built in. All right, so why don't we go ahead and dig through this here. This this is definitely odd. Yeah. This is new. But what, what it does do though, is when I'm looking at it, and mm -hmm. if we're in normal mode, it's gonna be hovering around like, this yeah. and as soon as you're in rate mode or rather manual mode in mode and you're flying fast forward then it looks more normal like it act like that profile looks pretty yeah. cool while it's flying around so yeah it's definitely different there's not anything i've ever seen resemble close to yeah. this so with all that said we'll flip it over here and this whole back section is a battery okay like that's yeah. that's a lot so you actually got to just pop the top out here then you squeeze both sides and it slides right out. Yep. But now, now this is a smart battery. This is, yes. You're not gonna be able to just grab a battery from one of your model airplanes or one of your other drones and put this in here. This is specific. Mm -hmm. Along with the battery here on the bottom, you're gonna notice just like on the Mavics mm -hmm. and many of the other uh, DJI products, you have a lot of sensors. Yes, actually you got four sensors. Four sensors. Yep, you got these two here that are facing to the bottom and then two on the front. Very cool. Now these sensors will be on or off based on what, what mode you're in, right? Yeah, yeah, so it depends on the mode. So if you're in normal mode, then all the sensors are active and it does have obstacle avoidance. So if you're flying forward and you're coming up to a tree or a building or what have you, this is actually gonna sense that and it's gonna slow down or stop much like the previous, you know, Mavics, things like that. The bottom ones are on as well, sensing the ground, sensing where you're at. Now there is no obstacle avoidance to the sides or behind it. So keep that in mind. If you're chasing me through the air and you're going backwards, mm. you're in trouble. <laughs> Which happens a lot. Yes, it does. Uh, along with this, you got the motors here. Uh, 
Typical DJI, which is pretty cool. There's no hardware to change out your props here. They do give you an extra set of props. Uh, they're color coded, so you just match up red for red. You press down a little twist. Uh, the rotational force keeps it locked in yeah. real nicely for you. It's a really cool feature to be able to change out your props uh, without having to go back to the field. Now, typical DJI products have the props that kind of fold up. Mm -hmm. These are solid. These are just like what you'd see on a Chase Quad or a yeah. Ristrom. There's, there's really not much difference other than the fact they're specifically yeah. made for these motors. Let's talk about the camera. All right, so we have a protective cover here, and this mm -hmm. is really important. Make sure you guys put this on anytime because there's a gimbal under here. It's yeah. just not like a typical fixed camera that, you know, isn't going to rattle around. And then this just pops out. You just lift up on the bottom here, and uh, that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so the camera, 4K 60 frames per second, okay. and I don't want to breeze over that. So one of the biggest features of this platform is, you know, if we're using a chase squad, what do we have on top of it? A GoPro. A GoPro or an Insta360 or some yeah. kind of HD camera. This actually has it built in. And it's not just 4K60 and you're done with it. There's a, well, quite a few different options. We're gonna dive into those later. Yeah. But yeah, so 4K60, you can adjust the frame rate, uh, 50 frames per second, 100 frames per second. It actually even do 1080 at 120 frames per second. So that's slow motion. Some super slow motion. Yeah, yeah. so it's really, really cool. 150 degree field of view. Okay. And then depending on what settings you're in, it can go down to 142 degrees field of view. That's really important because when you're when you're flying a chase quad or race mm -hmm. drone or something, the wider the field of view, oftentimes people prefer that because they can capture more image, yeah. they can kind of see where they're going, around a corner, things like that. Uh, but for the AP pilots, what does that usually mean when you have a wide field of view? So the, the wider the field of view, think of it like a GoPro. You get that distortion. You know, yeah. lens distortion, how if you're looking at the horizon, you see that kind of, you know, weird yeah you know warping effect of it this actually has a compensation built in i think you can select it along with this this also has rock steady stabilization mm -hmm. which is pretty huge that means any kind of crazy stick movements and stuff yeah. it smooths it out uh typical to dji too you also have all the led lights in there yeah. you have a, a lot more in the back here. i'm kind of eager to see if these guys light up so the quad's cool but also, I mean, let's not leave behind the transmitter. All right, so one really cool thing I noticed about the transmitter here is it looks a lot more similar to what we're used to flying, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a TBS feel, yeah. uh, PlayStation controller and stuff. But this is really kind of where a lot of radios are going, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. But there's a lot of different features and things that are right at your fingertips uh, with all the buttons. Right, and before we get to the buttons, I do want to talk about the sticks. So yeah. right now you notice they're, they're both centered. Yeah. which is definitely different from what we're used to. You know, the guys out there flying the Mavics and things, this is what you're used to. For us, we're used to this stick being down to the bottom all the yeah. time. Zero throttle means it's gonna stay on the ground. Yeah. You push it up, it goes up. In order to actually change that, which you can, is in the back here, you can use a, use tool. a little tool to loosen up a screw, and this is gonna allow us to put this all the way down to the center. For normal mode, sport mode, you probably wanna leave it centered like that. If you're gonna be doing like we do and dabbling more into the manual modes, we want that actually adjusted. Very important thing, yeah. yeah. Now, with, along with this here, we got our power button, we got our first customizable button. Now, there's a couple different customizable options that we have through here. We'll be able to assign different features to that customizable button right. one. Along with that on the very top here, uh, everything's right at your fingertips, which is nice. One thing I'm not a big fan of the switches because oftentimes I'm pretty hard on my radio. Uh, this will fold down, drop in, and it won't break anything right. off, which is, uh, which is a pretty important thing. Yeah, and then on the switches here, on the very back, this little roller here. Yeah. Gimbal adjustment. Yep. Nice and simple. If you've flown a Mavic, you know exactly what we'll we're talking the about there. Now. This button is probably the one that I'm most excited about. So they they market this towards a lot of beginners, you know, whether whichever direction you're coming from. But if you're doing that and you're in manual mode and you're actually trying to learn how to fly this and you get messed up and you're not sure what to do, you tap this button and it's an emergency brake. It will stop the drone, depending on how fast you're going, it might take a little bit longer to stop than if you're really going slow. However, it will stop and it's just going to hover and it's going to flip it directly into normal mode. And it's going to allow you to breathe and to take over with the drone again. Now, if you press that for a long press, it's going to give you the same features what you see on the Mavics. It's going to return to home mm -hmm. and land. An additional press will stop that feature. Right, right. All definitely awesome points. Then right here beside our emergency button yeah. we have our mode switch yeah. so you have the three flight mode well i say three there's actually like there, there's technically four almost five we're going to say three right now so you got the normal mode which is well reminiscent of the mavic the aerial platforms mm -hmm. to where you know it's pushing the camera around the sky so sticks are centered you hold them down either to yeah, the inside GPS or stabilized. yeah yeah so it takes off and you push a camera around the sky mm -hmm. 
Uh, sport mode is one that has an asterisk for me that I yeah. want to get into a little bit more because when I'm reading about it, it doesn't seem like the old school Mavic sport no. mode. Uh, so as you're flying here, typically you'd be using yaw control and bank and pitch mm -hmm. together all at the same time to try to capture a very smooth coordinated track. From what we're reading, it looks like sport mode kind of does that for you. Yeah, yeah, and that, that looks great and I can't wait to dive into it more. But manual mode is kind of, for me, where I'm going to live. That's why we have you here, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be good for something. No. So yeah, the, the manual mode, and again, to touch on, you have to go into the goggles to unlock the full rate, the full yep. acro mode for manual mode. But when we Im immediately switch this into manual mode, then you get kind of the stabilized flight to where, you know, zero on your throttle stick is going to be landed. And then as you raise it, you're going to increase your altitude. But in order to move forward, you have to tilt the drone forward. And then if you let go of that stick, it's going to automatically level back out. So that's a really cool feature, really awesome to be able to ease into mm -hmm. the FPV flying experience. Yeah, so that was three modes. Now we're going to talk about another one. So while it says three, here's another one. So that's your fully manual mode. That's where you go into the goggles, you activate it. And then that is, you're going to do flips. You're going to do rolls. If I hold the right stick completely forward, the drone's just going to keep flip flopping around until it eventually crashes. If I let go of that stick, whatever angle and attitude that drone has, it's holding. So that means if it pitches forward 20 degrees and I let go of the stick, it's gonna hold that 20 degrees mm -hmm. until we correct for it. Now this has a lot of different features as well too. This is our next customizable switch. And you'll notice that this is a three position switch. So we'll be able to customize this to actually have three different behaviors right on there. And right next to that, that's where we can switch from photo mode to video mode. Right, and then the one right behind that is our start and stop for manual mode. It says start and stop, it has an M on it. So I assume when we actually switch this into manual mode, yeah. it probably has like the stabilization feature, like the, the angle. angle mode. And then you actually probably have to push that to activate it after you've went through the goggle menu and said, yes, I believe I'm ready for full manual flight. Looks pretty promising. Internal yeah. battery here. I do love the fact that it charges through a USB-C. And then the battery with all these little lights on the front, you can see what the battery is. That's a transmitter. I guess our last component here is the goggles. All right, so obviously it would not be an FPV experience if we didn't have some form of FPV goggles. Mm -hmm. Now typically with AP platforms, you'll have your phone linked down below where you'll be able to see what the drone is seeing. Uh, but this is truly an FPV experience. This is where you're wearing the goggles, you're fully immersed in the flight, and this has a lot of really cool features. Yeah, and they're, they're actually comfortable. Yeah, they really yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. like I, I really enjoy these. I, I went over to the V1 a long time ago, and now the V2 are here, and I'm even more excited about them specifically external battery for this little battery here yeah the other ones were external as well but the difference was that you had a little barrel plug that plugged inside of your goggles that went over to a flight pack yeah. that was typically the ones i used 1300 milliamp hour yeah this is 2500 milliamps that's that's that, over an hour that's a lot that's yeah. not that's that is awesome and then of course you get the cord plugs into it just Slide this in your pocket, and go fly. And you're good to go. Yeah. Now, as far as features here, you know, everyone's faces are a little bit different here. You have your diopter adjustment, so you can move the lenses in and out here. Mm -hmm. I have real narrow eyes. Yours may be a little bit wider. So this is also a version two here, which yeah. means it's an upgrade from version one, which I fly those goggles, I love them. Those are 720p at 120 frames per second. Right. This is more. Yeah, so these are 810p at 120 frames per second. And then they're using the OcuSync 3 technology with DJI, which if you're like me, doesn't really mean much until you say ultra low latency, like less than 28 milliseconds, which means personally, I can't feel a delay when yeah. I'm flying these. Yeah, and, that, and that's an amazing thing. Imagine you're going through the air, you're flying this at top speed. Yeah. You need to have that information in your eyeball so your brain can react as quickly as possible. The lower the latency, frankly, the more in connection you are with your platform. Right. So one cool thing about these is the full menu system that is in the goggles. And we kind of touched on it earlier when it's like, if you want to go into manual mode to where you're getting the full rate mode experience, you have to set that up in the menu system. And it's really intuitive. There, there's a couple buttons here on the side, most notably this five directional button. Mm -hmm. Five directional just means it goes left, right, forward, and back, and then you can clicky it. So you can actually go through everything. 
And then the OSD, you've seen these. The yeah. OSD is pretty cool. Yeah, beautiful OSD gives you all the key information, but it doesn't take away from your experience by flying it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, another cool thing I really like too is, and this has kind of saved us in a lot of different episodes, we, we can put an SD card and record yep. from the goggles. We can also record from the platform, which is a pretty important thing, especially if you're capturing that experience where maybe you're putting your quad in a position where you're going over a cliff or something. Yeah. Maybe something happens, you don't get it back. You can keep all that data and record it from your goggles. Yeah, and the biggest difference there is the goggles are going to record, you know, at well, I assume these are going to record at the 810p, whereas version one recorded at 720p. Yes. And then the drone, obviously, if we're recording in 4K, that's going to be in 4K. So it's not going to be as good of quality. At least you get it. But you get it. Yeah, you, you, you can't use footage that you don't have. One thing I strongly recommend is treat your goggles with respect. Take mm -hmm. care of them. Don't put them in the full sun. If you're new to the hobby, anytime you turn your goggles into the sun, the light can go through there and it can burn out your display. Yeah. You don't want to do that. I want to reiterate that. Just back up, play that again. <laughs> Because that is something I've seen yeah. a lot of people. Just yesterday, I saw somebody make a post about that, how they have a spot burned into their goggles, and all it takes is a split second with the sun shining in there. At it. So if you're new to FPV flying, especially flying with the goggles, and you're flying on a hot, humid day, you know, your face is warm, a common thing is to have your lenses fog up. Mm -hmm. There's a really cool feature on these goggles and other high-end goggles here where there's a fan in there. Yeah, yeah, and that's all it does. While you're flying, you got these on, you're plugged in, you're gonna feel a nice, cool breeze across your face. And that's all it's doing, it's keeping the lenses fog free. It's a nice, nice feature. If you can't see, you can't fly. Right. Now there is an additional mode and it actually involves this accessory. This is a motion controller. This is basically this transmitter, but instead of using your sticks, you're actually using motion to go up and down, right and left, or maybe it's this way, we'll find out. Yeah. The trigger accelerates, we got a big old brake button, we got a panic and takeoff button. There's even some features here that haven't been activated yet for the future. So this is a pretty crazy accessory. We are definitely gonna try this out in the field, but first. Yeah, first we're gonna go with what we know and start here. So let's go fly. Let's go fly. All right, the time's come. Yes, it is, and there's two quick key features, well, facts, that I wanna yeah. touch on before we do anything, and that is one, before we came outside, what we did do is release the spring. Mm -hmm. So our throttle now actually goes to the bottom instead of recentering itself. Mm -hmm. For us, we're gonna live in that manual mode. So I wanted to have that already, but we're gonna start in normal mode. And number two is how I'm holding the goggles right now. That's important. Yeah, very important. You don't wanna have the lenses towards the sun like we talked about in the office. So definitely yeah. hold them, cuddle them. Yeah, cuddle them. Keep them in a bag if you're storing them or, or right. cradle them under your arm. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, brother, what's your game plan here? So literally the way I always test drones anyway is line of sight first. I want to get a feel for the controls just to make sure nothing's going to go crazy because if i'm under the goggles and something goes nuts i don't i can't see what happens and that discipline is something you should do with pretty much every first flight and speaking of first flights if you are new to the hobby and say you're looking at this for your first flight dji actually has a really good simulator that yeah. you can use for free and, yeah. and then go into that mode and have a much better experience yeah it's the dji virtual flight simulator that they have and then of course any fpv simulator really is going to give you the the basis that you need to step into that mode all right enough talking that's fine yeah all right all right so just like all the mavics the fan of things like that to activate the motors when we first start you're going to pin both sticks either the bottom inside corners or the bottom outside corners really doesn't matter and then if we get in trouble to land you just hold the throttle stick so your left stick all the way to the bottom for three seconds nice and easy right all right, we're gonna try. Here we go. I'm convincing myself. First flight. <laughs> All right, normal mode, lift off. Okay, that was. <laughs> did you see how it pitched it up just a little pitched bit? Up and then just lifted. And that's because how the motors are situated, right? Yeah. That, that was, and it's it's dead locked. Like I'm just holding the controller here at this <laughs> point. I, and it's just hovering right I think there. you're good to put the goggles on, man. So one thing that we're not doing right now is recording with the drone. Okay, you wanna change that? So if you, yeah, and thank you. No problem. <laughs> so like we talked in the office, this button here is if you hold it down, it will switch between photo and video mode. Long press. Yeah, long press it. And then if you short press it, it activates whether it's a video or photo, yeah. whatever. And then I wanna do a quick test. So our gimbal rocker, there's a, yeah, so perfect. We are at, I'm gonna go about 15 degrees up. And then let's fly it like a Mavic real quick. Yes. Normal mode is going to be using GPS, auto stabilization. It's going to be just like you're flying a Mavic around in the air. When you stop and center your sticks, it's going to stop. It's going to hover. Dude, 
This is smooth. The controller feels great. How does it feel with the shorter sticks? Because typically when we fly uh, any kind of radio control or transmitter, the sticks are much longer yeah. for a uh, for a chase quad or for right. uh, a plane even. And for me, honestly, it's a little short. Like I would love them to be a little bit longer. It's not really a deal breaker. This it is very, very active. That is moving fast. I love it, man. Nice. And that's, okay, so that's locked in. I'm, I'm rocking it forward and back really, really hard. And the only thing I'm seeing is a little bit of uh, horizontal jiggle. Okay. Looks like you have no I problem mean, really getting the shots that you would typically with a, a, a Mavic, though. No, this is, this is very, very smooth, very, very easy to fly, very easy to control in this mode. Like adjusting the gimbal as we're going around. Now, one thing when we're circling like this, now remember there is no side obstacle avoidance. Or rear. Or rear, right. So I could literally just fly into something and so let's just rip it through here a little bit. So normal mode, we're gonna pin the stick. So that's moving That's a, pretty respectable. A pretty good little clip, man. Yeah, that's definitely faster than Mavic. Now, if you're a first time pilot here and this is especially your first time flying a drone, this is the mode that you wanna start off with. This is gonna give you obstacle avoidance. It's gonna give you all the details you need to know. It's also gonna give you GPS stabilization to keep you locked in. Uh, make sure you enjoy that, fly that, get used to that before going to any other modes. So one cool thing that I did see when I was bringing it back in to get this done was there's an augmented reality H for our home So it's showing where your home is. So it literally had an H on the ground right beside Noah. That's ridiculous. That was pretty cool. That is really cool. Okay. Cool. You gonna try another mode? So we're swapping up to sport mode. Yeah. Now sport mode, obstacle avoidance, it gave me some pop-ups there just telling me, hey, your obstacle avoidance isn't gonna work right now. And immediately I feel the reaction. This is, so the right stick, I'm, I'm just letting it hover. Okay. Pull back on the stick. Whoa! And then let go. That was like 90 degrees. Dude, all right. So you still have That's GPS lock on this. Every, everything, yeah, everything no. is solid. If I'm not mistaken, in sport mode, it coordinates your turns, doesn't it? So right stick, Yeah. on that turn, I'm not doing any kind of right left. So there's right left with my right stick. Now, if I just push forward and I do y'all to the right. Yeah. It banks you. It, it's doing a coordinated turn by itself right now. So that's all done with the left stick yaw. Yep. So the left stick wow. right now is controlling altitude and coordinated turns. The right stick, you can still, you know, we'll, we'll refer to it as strafing. <laughs> you, you can still strafe so, left and right, yeah. but you don't have to. You just push it forward and then it's going to give you that FPV experience without needing to learn really how to coordinate your turns. So this is like the best of both worlds. That's amazing. So basically what sport mode does is it simplifies all the disciplines you'd have to have if you're flying a chase drone or a chase quad. So yes, you have full stabilization when you switch to manual mode. That's when the camera actually locks to the drone, just like a typical manual mode style flying. And, and you have reverse and stuff. So if you needed to fly backwards, you could do that as well? Yeah. Yeah. So we have every, every style of flying right now that we want to do is available in this with our coordinated turns. I really do think that this would be a really good way for somebody to chase a plane for the first time and have a good experience doing it. Now, the only thing is, is like when we, when we're chasing a plane, while we're chasing a plane and we're actually flying backwards in front of it yeah. with this one, since the camera is not dead, you know, since the camera is not following the drone, you would actually have to tilt it mm. manually to do that in That's sport true. mode, but it's not, not a make or break, right? Yeah. You could, you could definitely do that. So there's a, there's one thing that we will try. We're going to switch it straight up to manual mode. And I'm kind of curious what it's going to do without landing. And we still have, okay. So we have to go in and tell it in the menus that we want to go into manual mode because we have not done that yet. Okay. Okay. So as I'm hovering, right? Yeah. So I'm in sport mode now. Yeah. We switch it to manual mode. Now it went, you saw, you saw how it leveled there real quick. Yep. So in my screen, I see switch to manual mode, use the control stick to move the cursor to the green line. So on my left stick throttle, it says move this to the green line. So now I'm green. Now, whoa. Now I just gave it to you. Now we're in manual <laughs> mode. Like we are legit manual mode. Like there's no stabilization. There's nothing. How does it feel? Does it feel scary or is it? it it's very reactive. I mean, we got a little gust and wind here today, but it feels, it, so you, when I say this, Josh, I'm talking to you specifically, yeah. it kind of feels like a, a 4S quad like we used to fly, you know? Yeah. While we were flying in normal and sport mode, the length of the sticks really didn't matter. 
like it flew great it felt great but now that i'm back into something that i'm more familiar with the longer sticks that we were talking about would be great so typically when you have your sticks that are a little bit longer you have a lot more feel of resolution and that was honestly a common issue with some of the early uh, playstation style controllers with the shorter sticks uh, people didn't get the resolutions they modified and made them longer we we're all we were wondering about that weren't we yeah yeah so it's flying like a true manual mode you know it holds holds attitude holds rate and there is a bank angle limit okay so is that able to be turned off do you know yes okay um, well you know what you should try is your panic button yes yep whoa <laughs> <laughs> that's a panic button that's oh, like nope that that was violent <laughs> but it did its job that was incredible oh, okay do, do it one more time Let's, we're gonna spin i'm gonna i'm gonna rip it right past this and then hit the panic button okay <laughs> that's that's terrifying that's you, you see the movie it was just like poof, pop. oh uh, i can't wait till you fight all right so basically when you're in uh, manual mode mm -hmm. it wouldn't flip over for you right it wouldn't flip over and that was honestly i didn't read the directions clearly enough so i went into the settings and changed over the custom mode from what said sport mode to manual mode and i thought okay now we're manual mode well you actually got to go into the gains and expo setting i believe is what it's called and actually switch off the attitude limit for manual mode so now we are in true manual mode gotcha along with that you can also change your pids your expos yeah. all the other settings, just like a normal chase quad uh which is really neat home point updated all right switch to manual mode and it makes you put something in the box right yep so the left stick i have to drop down to and the reason the reason for yeah. that is it's trying to take you to the point Ooh. where it's at the same level for throttle uh, yeah. to keep it hovering. Exactly, you're you're a smart fellow. Ah, oh, thanks. So All right, so does it feel any different now with your your bank limit off? That's a flip. That was a yep, yeah, sure sure does. One thing I need to fix is the gimbal. So tilting it up more. So right now we're at about we're at a thirty degree tilt. Okay. So that allows me to go faster, obviously. So the more the gimbal is tilted, the more the camera is tilted. That thing's cruising. Yeah, the more you can actually tilt the drone forward, and that's how you get your faster forward movement. And right now, I literally don't feel too, other than the controller, obviously, yeah. I don't feel any real difference between this and a typical race drone. That's amazing. Or a freestyle, yeah. FPV drone, rather. Holy cow! Well, one thing I noticed though is it's quiet. And yeah, yeah. The, the the typical freestyle or I say freestyle FPV drones that you fly, they're not that quiet. Like the the chase quads that we typically do, they're they're not this quiet. You can still hear it. Obviously, it's not going to be super silent. <laughs> it's just unreal to see a DJI product flying around like a chase quad. It's, I actually like you, man. So one thing I do want to do, we're going to go right here. We're going to level out real quick. And three, two, one, to the moon. I see that works. <laughs> all right, so one thing I do want to do. All right, Noah, get ready. You get I'm going to go down. Yep, we're going to panic mode it right in front of us. So we're going to take it over here. We're going to loop around the tree and we're going to floor it. <laughs> did you get that? I hope you did. Did you, did do, you, did get you see that? that? Yeah. All right. All right. So I do want to point out real quick. We had talked about it kind of in the shop there where it was like, all right, if you're going 20 miles per hour, you yeah. hit the panic button. It's going to stop pretty quickly. If you're ripping this thing, you know, top speed, they're saying, I think, what was it? 87 Eight, miles 87 per hour. 87 or 84 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. So if you're pinning this and you decide, hey, we're going to hit the panic button now. Well, it's not going to stop right now. It's going to stop in a few feet. So it will stop. Well, but I yeah. think you hit it right when you're passing us yeah. and you're talking about maybe 40 feet. There is no way you could be good enough on the sticks to be able to lock. I mean, you oh, could no. stop it. Uh, yeah. I could stop it in two feet, but it'd be into the ground, but <laughs> you, could, you could stop it, but it wouldn't be with that controlled order where you lose zero altitude. Yeah. I'm down on the ground. We're good to go. Okay. I've got battery for goggles and transmitter. We got one more battery charged up, but we haven't even touched the motion controller yet. Yes. So let's dive into motion controller and then we'll come back and do some Can't more wait. fun. 
<laughs> All right, man. This is the test. They, they say that the motion controller is intuitive. I've not flown this drone yet, and I'm using a motion controller, which I've never used before in my life. So uh, this is going to be a test. Okay, All uh, right. are you ready? So double, double tap your lock button. It starts spinning. All right. You... Wow. Okay. That looked cool. You're moving. You're going, JPEG. Dude, I feel like I'm flying an airplane. I'm looking up as I'm going up. That's so cool. Looking. Oh my gosh! Okay, so it looks like you just tilted and now you're doing the coordinated turn? Yes! How do I look? Do, am I it, flying good? It looks beautiful. Dude, that looks... I feel like I'm in this gentle flying wing right now, but everything is so smooth. It's like I'm flying an airplane and I'm in the, like an F-16 and I'm just moving it just real gently. <laughs> Man, it looks like you've been doing this your entire life. It's so easy to fly. This is definitely intuitive. Um, you know, we all kind of can relate to our first smartphone, mm -hmm. how once you held it for a short amount of time, you kind of got used to it. This, just by, by looking and flying, and then everything they put in front of you, it's not obtrusive, and it's incredibly intuitive and easy. They they have really done something this is, incredible. Here. This, is, this like, is a whole new way of flying, and it's not scary. And you know, especially for like adventure flying, I can just kind of carve around just like I'm flying a normal airplane. And you know what the crazy thing is, is just like right there, I just was able to skid around. The shot I want to get with this, I'm not using, my hand's in my pocket. <laughs> and the shot, like I want to skid around and I want to look at the hangar, I could do that. Yeah. Look at this. Hi guys. So I am curious, like if you come towards us and just let go of the stick or let go of the trigger, how fast is that going to stop compared to like if you hit the panic button? All right, I'll come right out, you guys. I got you in the bullseye. This should honestly be an interactive game. I'm pulling off the trigger. And there you go. Right okay. There. Okay. So it, it was like a gentle. That okay. okay. I just that was pretty is, agile. It is so naturally comfortable, guys. You wanted me to do that panic stop. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Take it out. Turn it around. Come yeah. full bore at us and just mash that button or don't mash it. Tap it. Right yep. over the runway. Wow. <laughs> That's a huge difference. That is fantastic. <laughs> All right. So it's locked right now. Again, I think I got to go to the red dot. I don't know if I'm honestly gonna fly it with any kind of different mode. I just, I feel the only time that this would not serve me well is if I wanna get those beautiful cinematic shots, but if I want the yeah. experience of flight, this is it. All right, let's go ahead and do a landing real quick. All right, so now I'm going to long press this, right? That looks long, gorgeous. All right, long pressing, we're landing. And look. Yeah, just took nothing. over and it's, wow. I just want to point out how well you landed that perfectly on the little piece of grass that's coming through the <laughs> runway. <laughs> I was going for that. I was going for that. So my anxiety just from something new like this was up here. The second I took off, and especially that visual uh -huh. reputation, I cannot emphasize enough the the little the little box on the bottom showing you the sensitivity of your movements, kind of trains your brain automatically, and then that dot that's showing you your focal point of where you're climbing over and under. Everything connects the dots just intuitively. Um, I could teach someone to fly that's never touched a plane before off of this. Now, the only downside I see about this, this would handicap you if you want to go into the real, you know, RC world, mm -hmm. where suddenly now you have to get a transmitter because none of the disciplines, in my opinion, are the same. But as a general aviation pilot, this feels like you're in a really amazing hybrid airplane where you can go cruising, you can go exploring, and instantly you can be like, I want to see this. Take your finger off the trigger, you can rotate yeah. around, you can get closer, you just can't pack up. I love it, man. Brother, that was amazing. It's a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And you know, everyone's probably wondering, price point. Right, so price point, and that's always a sticky subject, especially for something like this, because yeah. it's not really cheap, but it is 1,299 bucks yep. for the entire combo. So you're getting the goggles, you're getting a controller, you're getting a drone, a battery, charger, and all the little incidentals that need to go along with that. Now effectively, you're actually getting two drones. This is truly a hybrid. Mm -hmm. It can live beautifully as an AP platform, and then it can cross right over to a chase quad, adventure flyer, right. fill in the blank. A lot on top of that, you're getting 10 to 20 minutes of flight time depending yeah. on how you fly. That's incredible. A typical chase quad, three and a half to five minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, if you wanted to go for the incredible flight experience that Joss has been <laughs> experiencing, for 199 bucks, you can get the motion controller as well. I mean... It changes everything. Yeah, with your reactions alone, it makes me want to buy it. And then if you're like us and you come out here and you fly a battery, you're like, man, that's awesome, but I want to keep doing it. There's a fly more kit. Yeah. And it's literally, it allows you to fly more. You get two batteries and an additional charger for $299. And if you do need a replacement airframe, that is sold as an accessory, not as a standalone item. And that'll be under the accessories area. That's uh, $739. 
Yeah, and so if you have this and you're wondering about, you know, if I crash it, what can I do? Well, DJI does offer their DJI Care refresh plans. It goes from 159 up to 319, depending on kind of what level you want. And if you want more information on that, links all in the description on that, as well as the drone everything yeah absolutely please go down to those links if you want to support flight test check that out uh, this is not a normal format for what we normally do on our main channel but this is such special new technology yeah. i don't think something like this has ever really come out before we wanted to share that with you first and there's no way tj we could have done it without you man uh, thank you so much it. for coming down yeah, thank you for having me yeah. tj's been a dear part of the family for many years here and he's also doing incredible things for buddy rc and he has his own youtube channel so please check that out in the link give him a subscribe follow him because he's doing amazing things i appreciate that man thank you well, friends, uh, we got to charge another battery. We'll see you next time. Bye.